before we no, why do I look that? <laughs> well welcome 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 we are blessed today to have our pastor with us uh we invited pastor keith to share with us some of the new knowledge that we have today about stewardship which as i say on staff is like the dentistry of of uh, the church as math is the dentistry of education stewardship is the dentistry within the church because you're not supposed to talk about it which i think to myself have you listened to christ <laughs> but anyway we talk about it here but we talk about it with glad and generous hearts welcome thank you um sorry it was late I, I oh please sorry <laughs> well everyone's very chatty today i realize the eagles are playing at four so that's why everyone's saying they're out. Uh, well it was such a nice morning all saints uh, it's like my favorite sunday of the year but uh lots of moving parts and we do have a really incredible live stream team that makes it all happen we meet on wednesdays and it's me george kathleen Elaine Flanagan does all the slides. Um, Emily Bristol is our communications person, so she coordinates the announcements with the weekly email. It was a gem. Uh, and a gem. Yeah. Carol Evans sends on all her stuff. The band sends in all their stuff. Bob uh, Monster's there for the live stream team. So Wednesday is our day. We pull all this together and we make it happen. It's so wonderful. Really um, so really uh, grateful for the opportunity to talk about glad and generous hearts. Um, and I'm going to share, I always think about things in slides, so I have a bunch of slides. Um, and what I want to do is first talk about this course that I took this summer. Um, it's a, an executive certificate in religious fundraising course that I did this summer. Impressive. And um, kind of some of the things I had learned from that. And then kind of how that feeds into this generous, glad and generous hearts theme, which uh, really is I, I see not just a theme for the fall, but through the coming year actually excuse me we do offer to our speakers if they wish to take their masks down because of the recording oh okay okay so. yeah if everybody's okay with that yes mm -hmm. yes fine with it. we would like to all take that. our masks <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah okay great thank you mm -hmm. uh, um so let's see yeah there we go so this summer uh or kind of late spring i took this course this executive certificate and religious fundraising course through the Lake Institute uh, on faith and giving. Um, it's housed in Indiana University School of Philanthropy, the, the Lilly School of Philanthropy, Lilly, Lilly Endowment. Um, so I have a life rule of staying close to Lilly money, <laughs> uh, Lilly Endowment money. So uh, from my sabbatical to the Zoe project to this. So um, it's a really tremendous uh, resource uh, in the nonprofit and church sector, and it is kind of the place to go to think about stewardship and religious fundraising. So like this is the place. And usually it's uh, you fly out there um, and you do it in person, but because of COVID, they offered it online, which was even better for me. Mm -hmm. So I got to do it remotely. Um, and, and they do, if you're ever curious, uh, they, they do blogs, they do you know, email posts, they do online free webinars, really it's like so much good stuff, I can't even keep up with it all. But um, they are kind of the place to be and to know and be connected with. So I was really grateful um, the, uh, the registration exceeded my continuing ed budget. The council uh, pumped me up so that I could attend it. Uh, and it was a really great experience. So just about the program, it was an eight week online program. Um, and we had Zoom gatherings twice a week. One was a plenary with, with everybody who was there. And we probably had um 30 people who were part of it and all different denominations uh different settings there were people who worked in seminaries there were people who worked somebody worked at a convent um there's somebody that uh, was a rabbi that was in my small group so we had really great representation and that made for really rich conversation uh when people were coming from these different perspectives um so we had a plenary gathering and we had a peer group gathering which was our small groups and we had this, I forgot the workbook, um, but we have a workbook about this size. Ooh. And it's, you know, it's, uh, it was actually a blessing to do it over eight weeks because they usually do it in a more compact period of time because people are usually traveling out. Right? So it usually happens in four days as opposed to over eight weeks. So I was grateful for that. Yeah, was, um, yeah. So we have this, this big workbook that has all the course stuff in it, uh, along with um, 
uh, an online course website that had lots of videos. I'm going to share a sample of one of those um, readings and um, you know discussion. You can type in your your comments and stuff. And uh, two books they introduced me to that were really great: is "Spirituality of Fundraising" by Henry Nouwen. Um, if you're familiar with Henry Nouwen, he's a Catholic spiritual writer. Yeah, and he's known for uh, books like uh, "Life of the Beloved" and, and other things. He's, he's written a, he wrote a beautiful reflection on the spirituality of fundraising. It was actually a lecture that they've turned into a small book. Who would have thought that? I know. It's really beautiful. Um, and, I, and that was that really touched me because yeah. I love Henry Nouwen. Yeah, and um, and this court and this book by uh, Carrie Alice Robinson, "Imagining Abundance: Fundraising, Philanthropy, and the Spiritual Call to Service," also really good. Sorry, I don't have those physical things to pass around. Okay. So, um, and then um, we did this eight-week work, and then there's a final project and proposal. So uh, my final project was the fall stewardship campaign for Upper Dublin, okay. which was totally fine, and uh, I, I got really good feedback on. I put a slide deck together, um, and that became glad and generous hearts. And then I have to do a report after the fact. So, but really good people that know their stuff, very supportive. And I learned a lot. So I'm really grateful for the opportunity. Um, I'm going to share. Want to share about this is like a five minute clip of um, one of the videos. There's there were kind of like, I and mean, there must have been fifteen to twenty videos that were kind of part of the coursework, and they're from different people. And this one is by <laughs> Kyle Small, and it's really good. And it's just as a sample. He talks about meaning making around money and giving. And talking about how oftentimes we approach stewardship and fundraising as this as dentistry as you know um, a grind as you know something that makes us uncomfortable and awkward or whatever and uh and he kind of flips that around so i'm just going to share like the first four and a half minutes of, of this and um give you a kind of a flavor for for the course hope it works I need to turn off my volume. Turn off my volume. Yeah. Kyle Small, I'm professor of church leadership at Western Theological Seminary. I'd like to let you in on a secret. I accidentally burned my house down in eighth grade. Oh, jeez. Really, it was, it was an honest accident. But the days and weeks following, people came to my home to provide gifts to make sure that my family was safe to make sure that we had a place to stay. But the story I remember most is when a senior in high school came to visit me, an eighth grader. He knocked on the door and asked my parents, do you mind if I take Kyle shopping? Someone from church has given me a hundred dollar bill and asked me to take him to the store so that we can buy the basic clothing items that he needs for when it's time to return back to school. I have dozens of stories like this, not just simply after the fire, but throughout my childhood, where somebody gave to me simply out of love and respect and belonging. Now I teach leaders, and I desire for leaders, including pastors, to live lives that make sense of these kinds of actions, that make these into habits, not anomalies. This story of burning my house down and receiving gifts in response shapes much of my understanding of living and of generosity and even of fundraising. But the fact is, for many of us, when it comes to money, religion, and fundraising, we have images that frustrate us or confound us that limit our ability to both make asks and to offer to others. Peter Senge, Peter who is a systems theorist and a professor at MIT, he calls these mental models. Mental models are the deeply held internal images of how the world works. Images that limit us to familiar ways of thinking and acting. He says very often, we are not aware of our mental models, nor are we aware of the effects they have on our behavior. When it comes to fundraising and religion, many of us have mental models that keep us stuck rather than inviting us to flourish. We hear fundraising or religious fundraising, and we think this is labor-intensive work. This will be groveling. Some of us have images or emotions of fear and insecurity of rejection. For others, you're afraid you might start participating in the Robin Hood story, taking from the rich to give to the poor. And one of the worst images of all for religious fundraising is that it's cheap tricks, that it's the worst 
of sales. Now, before I disparage sales, let me say this. As a vocation, sales is extremely pastoral work. And if you haven't interviewed someone in your religious community who is in sales, do so. Ask them, what are the important practices and skills of your work? As a matter of fact, little side note, Henry Nowen says it well. When it comes to fundraising, people who work in the marketplace are often wiser than people who work in the church. This is largely because we have limiting mental models of what fundraising is. This is partly tied because we haven't thought about fundraising as ministry. Now, I know you've already heard about this, and you've probably talked about Henry Nowen's little book, The Spirituality of Fundraising. But Nowen is trying to give you a new mental model, a new way of making meaning about money and fundraising. First, you know you have to hear your own story and write your own autobiography of money. But he wants to invite us to think about fundraising as ministry, as a call to conversion. He says fundraising is always a call to conversion. This comes to both those who seek funds and those who have funds. Whether we're asking for money or giving money, we are drawn together by God who is about to do a new thing through our collaboration. Fundraising, and this is a, a mental model for you preachers out there. Now one says, fundraising is proclaiming what we believe in such a way that we offer other people an opportunity to participate with us in God's vision and mission. Once we begin to believe and accept the image that fundraising is ministry, that it's a subset of generosity, that it's the art and science of joining the nature of God who loves the world, we can begin to grow a mental model where fundraising is hope. That's powerful. Fundraising is hope. Yeah, love that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I really like that. By the way, if you just look over his right shoulder, you can see a a, a Compostela from the Way of Saint James. Oh, he yeah. he did the Camino also. I have that same certificate in my office. So when you walk uh, the Camino de Santiago, you receive that Compostela. Saying you're a pilgrim in the way of St. James. So. And your eyes would have picked up on that. Yeah, I hadn't, I hadn't uh, noticed it the first time around, actually. Mm -hmm. And above that is a map of northern Spain, where the uh, pilgrimage route, the main pilgrimage route goes. But, um, so uh, that's just one piece of this video and one video among many. You can sort of see the kind of uh, approach that they're talking about fundraising and stewardship as ministry, as a form of hope, rather than, you know, groveling and, and begging and and all of that. And um, so that really kind of came, that flavor kind of ran through the whole course. In addition to the people, the, I guess, instructors, they're not all professors, but the instructors that led the, the course as well. Um, so some of the things that I picked up um, that really stood out to me through this was cultivating a culture, cultivating a culture of generosity that we wanna celebrate and reinforce our culture of generosity of time, talents, and treasure. And this is something that we included in our mission, vision, and value statement that runs all the way through that, talking about generosity as a core value and that cultivating a culture of generosity is part of our vision and that generosity gets lived out in lots of ways, not just um, you know, a false stewardship campaign, that um, it's important to connect, um, that money follows mission. So it's important to talk about the mission um, and how we connect that to the mission. So we need to be clear and passionate about our mission so people will be inspired to give and know what they're gonna make happen. Um, and so talking about our mission, vision, and values, our strategic plan that we've adopted. So sort of, a, yeah, there are mental models about stewardship that I kind of grew up with or that I kind of heard in the endless clergy conference presentations, you know, that also just <coughs> never quite set, set right with me. Um, and, uh, and this course has given me kind of a, a better language, a better framework um, for, for doing that. So we always wanna be connecting money and mission. You know, um, I sort of feel like in, you know, in my time here, we haven't always made that connection very well. So sort of like, please give, and then we'll show you the budget in January, as opposed to saying, this is what specifically you're giving is doing, you know? 
And going through this mission, vision, and values process and the strategic plan is helping us to look at everything we're doing in the budget and say, how does this support and reflect who we are, who we want to be, and what's in our vision for the future? So um, I want to do a better job of making that connection. You know? so, um, so people, you know, more than we pass the budget at the end of the meeting, you know, maybe a quarter of the people have read it or what, you know, like let's make it meaningful. Let's really talk about that. So money follows mission. Well, I just interject when he spoke about uh, being in sales yeah. and to look at that. It just exploded in my head. My father was in sales and mm -hmm. he would always say to me, a teacher that I was the same way, you sell yourself first and then your product. Mm -hmm. When I hear this, that's what, and what we're doing here, that's what we're doing. We are people of God and we're on a mission. And this is the value. So we are presenting the mission. Then the support follows. And I think well, that's invaluable. And then the kind of the next step in that is um, kind of few, you know, this movie, I don't know if you ever, I haven't seen the movie, The Wolf of Wall Street, but it's based on this guy um, who, I don't even know the whole story, but he was like this incredible salesperson. And there was this kind of interview with him. And he was talking, or a, yeah, it was like an interview after the movie came out, and people were interested in him. And uh, he was talking about sales. He's like, now say I want to sell this pen. You know, I could go on and on about like what this pen will do, it can write upside down, the colors, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's like, that's not how you sell things. He said, tell me, tell me about that pen you're using now. What do you like about it? You know, and so it's like a, a real kind of- uh, You make a connection. Well, you're asking, you're asking the person what, what, what's meaningful to you. Why does that matter to you? Why do you use it? Why do you care about it? And then saying, well, you know, this pen is kind of, a, kind of accomplishes those things, but even in a better way. So we really started with, I want to understand, and, and I'm going to talk about that in just a minute too, kind of what is the, the desire, the perspective of the donor, you know, and to, to have a transforming impact um, on the church and in, in the world. Um, they also pointed out it's a really, you know, it's a challenging environment for churches, which we kind of know. <laughs> um, but, you know, one of the things they talked about was not just um, kind of the church environment, but they said there are so many more nonprofits now than there used to be. Hmm. And so, yeah. I was thinking this morning how joyous our service was this morning. Yeah. And I'm thinking that giving should be a joyous yes. event. Yes. Yes. And looking at dancing at what, you know, yeah. and how uh, positive it should be. Yeah. Something that people want to. Absolutely. People yeah. came back from Tanzania, seeing that in Tanzania, with the people, how joyful they mm -hmm. were with what so little, like they just could not wait to give. Mm -hmm. And you know, we're, we're like, I mean, like, it's funny because, and so everything else <clears throat> besides stewardship is joyful giving, like our time, our service, you know, like, and then, but then we kind of get to this moment and it just feels different. And I think part of the goal is that it shouldn't feel different. Mm -hmm. Like this is part of the whole, you know, and uh, like this fall, we're gonna do time and talents as well. We're gonna have some kind of form or something that people could fill out, you know? So with a way of acknowledging we give in all of these different ways, but we are a generous and glad and joyful congregation. Mm -hmm. And that, sh that should be just the same as when we talk about giving your right salary. But sometimes it's not because it can be difficult to talk about or, or awkward, or maybe our mental models are not what, what we would like them to be. It doesn't usually make you think about dancing. Yeah. Yeah. But this morning service, we did. Yeah. 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 That's stewardship should feel like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. well, I, I always am struck when we do the confession, we talk about we have so much abundance and yet we act out of scarcity. Mm. And that is really a thing with our with our giving with money. You know, we are always afraid that oh we're not gonna have enough. And yeah. so we have to really change our whole paradigm. Um, that we have, we do really have the functions that can we give out of the abundance. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, all good stuff. So yeah, this, so there's even more nonprofits than there used to be. So when you look at like a nonprofit giving over like the last handful of decades, church, just in the nonprofit sector, church giving was much more of nonprofit giving. 
but now it's it's less of nonprofit giving because there's so much more competition in the nonprofit world. So even within just nonprofits, it's different. You know, so I was like, oh, like I know like churches, there are headwinds for churches and <coughs> membership attendance, you giving all that all that stuff. Um, but uh, I was like, oh, like here's a kind of another kind of lens or layer to understand some of that. Never ever thought of, never knew that. Yeah, I didn't either. Yeah. So that was great. It, the course normalized a lot of things. It's like this isn't not anybody's fault. This is these are things. These are huge macro trends that are happening. And um, the thing is to understand them and then adjust. You know. Um, so two other things: donor care. Um, I thought this was uh, something that made an impact on me, that donors are not objects, they are subjects, and like all of us, they want to contribute to something mean meaningful and life-giving and successful. So, um, and more kind of, some of the examples are kind of out of development work, like if you're like a capital campaign for a college chapel or a university or, or the things, you know, where you're, you're cultivating relationships with donors so that you can help ideally help them to make the kind of impact that they want to have on the world, you know, through their resources. Um, and so instead of just uh, asking people for money, you're really um, kind of the pen question is you're really um, interrogating in a sense and saying, what is it that's meaningful to you? What kind of impact and difference do you want to make? Um, what kind of lasting legacy do you want to leave? And how can I help you to do that in whichever, whatever way? Maybe it's for this project and something I'm doing, or maybe it's for something else. But, um, you know, that's sort of the abundance too. It doesn't have to be for me. It could be, you know, it all helps the whole. So um, that was very cool to hear. And a lot of that happens sort of kind of in churches in a sense when we gather, when we talk, when we meet, when we pray, to, you know, you hear the things that are important to people and so forth. But I think there could be definitely be more more of that. Um, one of the uh, assignments uh, for the class was, or suggestions was, talk to somebody that's made a transformational gift, and kind of hear about what motivated them to do that. You know, and so um, I reached out to the family that uh, gave the uh, mortgage matching gift. You know, and said, so tell me about this. What how did this come about? Where did this come from? And, and what other kind of philanthropy do you do and why and what motivates it? Um, and what does it mean to you? And that was like a really good, and, and I got to, to do that because I have, a, I have a homework assignment. Can you help me with my homework, you know? But like doing more of that would be, I would love to do more of that. It was just like and so what did they say? Um, they hate debt. <laughs> That's one thing. So. Um, you know that, oh, and that, they hated our debt. They hate just don't like. I mean, themselves don't like debt. You know, like carrying well, debt. Giving away two hundred thousand dollars is what I help them. Oh well, they're fine. They. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's not. Okay, I, that's not I mean, that. I mean, that's not putting them in debt. But um, but like with organizations that they're a part of, they don't like debt. They don't like servicing, paying to service debt. Don't like fees. You know, kind of all the things that go around with carrying a mortgage. And they carry that much about us. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's really deep, isn't it? Yep. And then to see the difference that not servicing a debt over the course of a year could make in terms of what we could give to capital, forward looking to the building, if that's your thing, or to our mission and ministry, you know, to, to our oh. regular budget. So, you know, they're very deliberate, very thoughtful about that and saying, we want to make a difference for our church. What is the way that we can do that? And invite people to um, participate, yeah, you know, and, and, challenge, and challenge us to do yeah. it. And we exceeded the goal. Yeah. 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 We, within probably the last eight weeks of the year, it was like incredible. Yeah. Um, so the, the challenge was basically 200,000, we raised 230,000. During the and, pandemic. Uh, during the pandemic. Yeah. And, um, and next year, there won't be a mortgage line in the pledging forms because there's no mortgage to pay off anymore. Have you found that most people do not want to be thanked? Um, I think, well, I think, um, although I think, I, I don't think people, I think people, um, they're not doing it for, people don't, aren't doing it for recognition. Right. They don't want to be fawned over. A lot of people want to stay anonymous. 
um, but but it's still important to thank people in a way that's yeah. you know obviously appropriate, um, especially with COVID. <laughs> you know, so with the mask on, I took flowers. <laughs> what did I do? Uh, took flowers and um, I had notes from uh, all the staff people. I forget what we did, but that we had a whole thing. Of, I mean, because of COVID, it was anyway. And that was fine. So you should have shared that with the rest of us. About the whole about acknowledging to this person people mm -hmm. that, that we might want to do something like you yeah. like the staff has done. Uh-huh. Oh yeah. No, yeah. we didn't. Yeah, no, we didn't. Yeah. Well, I think there was also um, a deep rooted respect for the wishes of the family right. to remain anonymous. And um, they were not seeking that. Yeah, they were, but it, when you use the word transformational, I saw that not just for the, the giver, but for the receiver, because look how we responded mm -hmm. to that. They could have just given us two hundred thousand yeah. dollars, right? I mean, that was a given. That was that was ours, right? That was, but they did it not with strings attached, but with love attached. You know, right. walk with us, right? And we did. Yeah. There was the gift. And it was transformational for us. It was also transformational for them. Exactly. And I think sometimes we think about the transformation that happens to the organization or the institution that receives it, but it was, but it's transformational for them. And the, you know, glad to be able to see this happen, but also for for other personal reasons as well. So, um, so donor care and thanking. We just need to do a better job of thanking people. Um, and. Um, I had so much fun writing thank you notes for the uh, for the mortgage campaign. I was writing like you know handwritten notes and sending stuff out, and it was like so fun. It was great, and um, I try to be I'm trying to be much better about that. And um, like for instance, with the tornado response, the the relief mm -hmm. fund, we had so many um, people from beyond the congregation donate to that fund. Um, I think maybe ninety people. Oh. Um, and some real significant gifts. So, uh, you know, what we did, like we wrote a letter and I signed it, Tracy signed it, and, you know, wrote a note on it. Um, but then we said, well, we just sent this quarterly mailer out to everybody, you know, like let's put that inside the quarterly mailer so they can see, you know, because all these people don't have real, much of a relationship with our church. They know somebody who goes here. But, so we did the quarterly mailer and the letter and we sent that out to everybody as a way of thanking them and also sort of saying, these are the kinds of things that we're about. And, um, you feel good about supporting our church. Isn't that what we teach our children? Yes, we do. Yes, yeah. we do. I was just sitting here thinking, in my own life, I have experienced greater joy in giving than in receiving. Oh, I feel that. Yeah. 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 Greater joy. Yeah. yeah. It's like an adrenaline yeah. to your heart. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it makes you want to do more and more. And sometimes you encounter people who don't understand that, which is okay. <coughs> it's, it's perfectly fine. But, you know, so I, I just think that whole scenario is now part of our legacy. Yeah. And I, I think, um, yeah, I think like some of the mental model around stewardship, you know, that lingers is, um, you know, I, I think maybe, you know, we don't, we haven't thanked people as well as we should because there's a mental model that this is what we should, this is what you should do. You should give to the church. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like the church like deserves it. I mean, or is owed it or is entitled to it, you know, by virtue of how we think about our giving. I don't think we say that, but I, I do think there's a little bit. So just like the thank you is just, you know, it's a very simple thing, um, but sometimes it gets lost in the flow. So the thank you acknowledges the choice. Yes, does the church, deserve it in ways, yes, because of what we do. But you have the power of choice, and that is a powerful tool that God gives us. Right. And when you choose, then that's what we're yeah. so choice. So those are themes that came through. Um, and then just this kind of last kind of framework piece, and then just talk about the campaign. But um, they made this di distinctions between obligatory giving, relational giving, and transformation giving, transformative giving, oh. which I thought was really helpful. Yeah. So obligatory giving, we have this budget, we got to pay for it, we got to keep the lights on, like we got to kind of it's obligatory. Um, 
uh, programmatic investment, which is probably where we are most of the time. Like, look at the things we do, look at the difference we make. Um, and so that's, and we're a very relational church. So probably we're in this, we're probably more in the relational giving kind of area. Um, and donor care, sort of that, you know, kind of, kind of di di digging in to what are people's hopes and dreams and, you know, their desires for um, their church and, and, and what we do at church and making a difference and, you know, really connecting the giving with, with those things. Um, that's when things start to get transformative. Uh, so I would like us to sort of migrate toward, I mean, they'll always probably be some of the relational stuff. People give for different reasons. And so people like to give because of the lights, you know, and keep the lights on. I mean, Susie uh, Noel once gave a temple talk about, I like giving to the lights and to the cleaning. And, you know, like, I like those, I like, I like keeping those things good, you know? So, mm -hmm. So people, you know, are motivated by different ways, but um, so there'll always be some element of all of this, but I'd love for us to kind of move a little bit more toward the transformative giving. And that's an ongoing process. That's not a, just a fall campaign. That is, that is ongoing. It's like Maslow's pyramid. Yeah, right. Yeah, the hierarchy of needs <laughs> right. for, for church. Lights on, uh, great programs. <laughs> transformative moments for our people, for our members, for our members. Is that the uh, five? Wi-Fi and also Wi-Fi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you see these things just like Matt Maslow's hierarchy with a pyramid and the bottom is the most basic need and then some people like put Wi-Fi. Uh, <laughs> he, he was a psychologist, Maslow. Yeah. One so, of my heroes. <laughs> so, uh, so there are just like lots of things like this in the course that were Ah, aha, right, okay. Um, so very helpful. So all of that, oh, oh, so the last thing, I'll just share my experience. Um, part of the biggest thing I probably got out of this course, this may sound weird and I really haven't shared it um, to people, is that this course really helped me to see myself as a generous person, which I really didn't. Because I always said, I wish I had more money to give. I wish I could give more time to more things. Um, and with four kids and, you know, just like, there's just feels like a lot of limitations. And so I think I, you know, in sort of leading stewardship, just had this kind of thing that, you know, inside of me that uh, I didn't feel that generous, actually. Um, and we, we did sort of autobiographies on, on generosity and giving and stewardship and telling stories in our small groups and um, started to kind of look at the whole of me and my family and all the ways that we give. Oh, we're generous people. We're just, you know, generous in, in our own way and, and uh, the things we care about. So, so now my saying that to you, you may think, what? You know, that's, but that was truly like this transformative moment for me. And this, and it's enabling me to better lead out of the sense of, I love being generous. Like I am generous and I love being generous. And I want us to have all that, share that same that kind of joy. feeling and experience. Yeah. So uh, that was like probably the biggest takeaway for the whole course for me. It's just like it's huge aha. Yeah. Don't self. you think most people feel that they're not generous, they're not giving enough, so they don't want to talk about it because mm -hmm. they don't like, they think there's something lacking in them yeah. because they're not giving what they think they should. Mm -hmm. that, that Are you talking about money? Yeah, yeah. Oh, People don't. I was thinking of generosity. Was oh, much oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's yeah, what that's what, what, what Pastor was saying. That, that he used a broader basis to define generosity. But if you're just using financial, there are a lot of people who feel, and talking to me, that I don't want to hear that because it doesn't make me feel very good about myself. And I'm thinking, well, that's not the intent. That's enough. But we do that to ourselves. Like you were saying, you thought you just were not generous enough. Yeah. Because right. you weren't looking at the bigger picture. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's probably coming to the sermon in the next week or two. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I do think, well, I don't know how you feel, but I mean, I, anyway. No, I, I, I know, I know we don't believe in reincarnation, but I really hope all the work that I'm doing on myself in this <laughs> lifetime pays off. <laughs> 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 Maybe for my children or something. Like, oh, I'm just doing a lot of work, internal work, this last couple of years. So. And um, don't let your priority and where do you want your money to go? Here or here? Just put your, what are your priorities? And 
I'm not sure that's part of the equation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, you know, what, what are, or to say it another way, what are the things that we value? Yeah. And, and, and having that kind of conversation with people, like, what do, what do we value? Yeah, we really value having a place where we can have this community. We really value a place we can bring our kids and they can grow up in faith. You know, like my, my daughter read today, that was like so cool. You know, there are, what is it that we value and how, does, how we spend our time, our talents, and our treasure reflect that? I don't know that we always get to that you know, in the rush of life. So that's kind of like a donor care conversation, right? Mm -hmm. Like how do you, what kind of, and thinking about like, uh, you know, what kind of impact or effect do you want to have on your family, on your community, on your neighborhood, you know, in the world? Um, and sometimes it, it feels like overwhelming. A friend of mine, he plays, uh, I think he plays the man who lived. He's a, another Lutheran yeah. pastor. And it's on my bucket list to learn how to play the guitar. I've tried three times, and uh, but it's on my list. And he's like, "Well, you just have to like start, you know." Which I still haven't. Yet. But he was like, "You know, I just do it little by little by little, and and you, you eventually get there, you know." And um, but some sometimes, so I'm thinking about like some maybe some of our young families when you're in the midst of it. It's just so overwhelming, and um, just to zoom out a little bit and say, "What is it that we value?" And how are we supporting that in what we do, what we're a part of, or not we choose to be a part of, or not a part of? I knew a person once whose goal in life was to die plenty of those. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of like my dad. Yeah. He would say, which was good because he died so young, but he wanted to see uh -huh. whatever he could give, do. Yeah. But this person who I'm referencing was one of the most generous people I've ever knew. And he would say that to me when we would talk. My goal in life is to die penniless. Yeah. And I thought, wow, I like that. My mom likes to give it away while she's here. Mm -hmm. So yeah, mm -hmm. she likes to see people. Us or sisters and yeah. If so. only you could figure it coming out, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Good <laughs> <laughs> <The> point, Janice. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you can always have a reserve over here, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. You got that. <laughs> so, um, this quote at the bottom. This is from our. This is from our vision. Uh, we will cultivate a culture of generosity and sharing our time, talents, treasures with and beyond our church. Mm -hmm. That culture of generosity, which we already have, and uh, um, in so many ways, but we want to. You know, I sort of want to bring to bear in that kind of joyful giving. So let's, okay, so all of this kind of spilled into this idea for with glad and generous hearts, um, which comes from Acts 2. Um, oh. Yeah, it's Acts 2. I got the quote here. Biblical. Yep. Um, it's amazing. There's a lot of stuff in there you can use. And here's a good quote. <laughs> Some good stuff. There's some good stuff in there. Um, and Emily, our digital communications person, made this logo based on our change lives, change the world, the fonts and the colors and the, all that. So we're so glad that it was here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And this is from Acts 2. So um, this is like the earliest church. So all came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. Um, all who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all, as all had any need. That scares people. But um, really? this part, this part, yeah. this, but this yeah. part, next part, yeah. day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number of those who were being saved. So I just love that idea of like, Kind of positivity with glad and generous hearts and i think that describes us a lot of the stewardship to reflect that um so another other things that came out of the course we started doing these mailers are you getting these mailers hopefully mm -hmm. you're not make sure you're not getting them We're not, no. oh, oh okay let's make sure so okay um great right, call the office okay. Well, okay. Let's, yeah, right. you should you right. should be. It's right out of the database, but yeah. if you're not, there's a problem, so we'll find it. Um, 
the mid-year ministry update uh, on the left we did that came right out of the course as i was doing the course and um i don't have copy. i didn't even make it to my office this morning uh but uh, mm -hmm. i already have copies for you but um again like it was sort of just inspired by the course and that was connecting um giving and mission so the way i broke that mailer down and i just wrote the text and emily put all the beautiful mess together mm -hmm. um, but we took different parts of our mission statement at that time and we broke it down and each page was a part of the mission statement it was kind of sharing how do we live out of how are we fulfilling our mission you know even during covid times and we want to tell those stories and we want to share those pictures so now we're going to do these quarterly mailers you know for forever you know or whatever um, but we're going to be doing those for a while so that's going to be a regular thing and then um, we did this quarterly mailer this fall in september and we talked about the new mission vision and value statement that we adopted the glad and generous hearts tornado response and then just some highlights from around the church and um, service information so we're trying to we're going to do these on a, on a quarterly basis we send them to all of our you should be on the list this is all the active all of our regular members and then we also send them to anybody that's given to the church in the last year that will continue now, my mother is part of it. My mom watches online and now she gives to our church. <laughs> so my mom's on that list. Uh, so it kind of makes it very personal. Thank you, mom. Yeah, thank you, mom. Uh, so um, we did get your letter, though, so we know we're. Oh, okay. I've heard you got that. Yeah. <laughs> it could be the mail service. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Sure Do you all good. hear how Pastor is regularly referencing our mission and our vision as on staff? We are really pushing hard on that in our own ministry areas because that is so essential and so powerful yeah, yeah i think i have a this is the vision statement um there's a lot of things but um so the, the process you know coming out of the transition process which we had um we got a lot of great input from everybody on zoom gatherings and surveys and questions of the week and we kind of looked at all of that and we really said, you know, we really need to clarify our mission, vision, and values. So we took all of that information that everybody provided, and we we revised our mission statement, which is very similar, but um, just a little bit more kind of clarity. And and then this is the vision. These are all vision areas. And then we have values. We we identified um, core values as well. And yeah, already this is helping us to focus on what it is that we uh, are about, what we're focused on, what we want to do. And it's just at the last staff meeting, we had this list and you know, asked everybody beforehand to think about what are the ways you see this vision being lived out in the congregation. And it was really cool. People picked all kinds of different things, things you might not expect that that person would, would pick. Um, and I think next month we'll probably do the values part. This week. This I week. Mean, yeah, yeah, this week. So. Um, so we so we adopted this mission vision values, and um, just in this last month we approved a new strategic plan uh, for the congregation that reflects these. So the vision is the vision, but it's like how do we realize that vision? Mission. What steps do we take to do that? Um, so we have a five-part strategic plan um, that Karen's been instrumental in bringing yes. it together um, and making it happen. So we're going to be She's getting that out to. Getting that out to, to everybody more and more and communicating that. I talked to Elaine Flanagan on Wednesday. She's part of the planning team. She's like, we haven't had a strategic plan here in 23 years. <laughs> so she was like, good job. Yeah. So I don't know if that's your fix. Do, do, you, do you think of those? How long have you been here, Fred and Chris? You, yeah, probably uh, over 20 years. Yeah. Yeah, so, so our plan was to hold hands and pray. Don't you look down? Something good happened. Well, you know what? It worked pretty well. <laughs> it did. It did. Come to us, Lord. <laughs> it was always improvising on a general sense of direction. <laughs> yeah. Plans are much better. Yeah, no question. So, um, so we're we're excited about it. Very excited about it, and it's and already it's a. Uh, we're already starting to put legs on some of those things. So um, the five areas, so are, you, are we okay? Well, not, this uh, is, you're, you're proving my point beautifully, thank you. Okay, I don't know. For time. Um, <laughs> it's, um, but you're good, you're yeah, good. Um, widening our welcome in becoming a more inclusive church, um, uh, developing leadership 
and uh, volunteers. Vol like volunteers and leadership, developing volunteers and leadership. Um, aid formation and families as a core area. Next generation ministries, so thinking what comes next. How, you know, young adults or whatever, whatever the thing is coming next, we need to be on that. And then stewardship of our building and, uh, and resources. Uh, and there are some things under each of those, but um, that'll be be coming out but we're already starting to work on it so very clarifying so for um the change or for not change like change worlds uh, with glad and generous hearts i really like alliteration uh, don't i change <laughs> life change world glad and generous hearts um we're doing a video series um fred and Ayla's is going to be out this coming sunday um we're doing a video series uh, about these visionaries so and uh, i'll share those with you so we've done two so far the tornado response and um, we had a video with our former field ed students. So the um, I was love that. Yeah, so, yeah. Love that. So the um, the the tornado is the, the we will be a force for the greater good in our communities and local and locally and globally. And with the field ed students, we really committed in our vision to train ministry leaders and serve as a resource to the wider church. Um, you know, at times Upper Dublin has had field ed students. Paul. Paul Beck, who's a retired pastor, he was a field student in 1974. Are you serious? Yeah. Um, so there's kind of a history of it, but it was really one of my hopes coming in that we could do that. And, and now we're on our fifth field student. Which is, you started us with Dan. Dan. Dan found us. Dan yeah. took. Dan asked me if he could come. Do you he remember like, well, when we were doing the packaging? Yeah. yeah That's the first time there. I met him. He wasn't. Yeah. He wasn't with us. At no, that. he wasn't with us at that point. Yeah. No, but um, he had done those meal packaging events out in New York. You see how this man attracts really good stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's this good looks and charming person. <laughs> <laughs> You'll receive a thank you note. <laughs> so what am I, chopped over? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Um, so one of the, let's see if I can. Uh, these videos are just a couple minutes long each. Go. Is that okay? Go. So just in case you didn't see it or if you did, maybe now you can see. If you saw them in worship for the two minutes they were up, now you know some of the backgrounds, kind of like, kind of what's, kind of, so hopefully they'll play. Just turn down your actual volume because oh. there's a, there's a time delay. Power lines down, some homes that are just really wrecked. So we're, we're praying for everybody here in Upper Dublin and praying for first responders for police and fire and EMTs and everybody at the township that's working so hard. If you need anything, if you know anybody that needs anything and that we can be of help, you know, please let me know. Um, we've got a community of caring people who uh, want to be able to help in times of need. Hi, my name is Tracy Clapham. Um, my husband, Scott, and I have been coordinating the tornado recovery efforts here at UDLC, and I also serve as the financial secretary here. It was just after the tornado happened that I learned that the Waldrons, who are members here at the church, had lost their home. And it just really sparked a desire to, to help the community, and I knew that UDLC always steps up and that we would be able to respond as a congregation. People responded with such giving and glad hearts. So many people would come and drop off an entire vehicle load and ask, what else can I get? And then they would run out and bring it to us. The volunteers that we had were willing to do anything. They did so much lifting and carrying and sorting and moving um, and then going out into the neighborhoods to deliver the items that those that couldn't get out of their house or didn't have a vehicle, um, getting them what they needed. Community Shop is here. Um, we're very excited to open it up in a couple days. We did it as a pay as you are able, hoping that those who are in need can come and take everything they, they need and if they are unable to pay, they're unable to pay. But then also bringing other members of the community in to be a part of this and then the proceeds will go to the Tornado Recovery Fund. Now over $30,000. Uh, Phenomenal. Yeah. And we've given away 20 in grants. Wow. Um, Upper Dublin's a special place and a special community, and 
Um, we, we know that, but we know that in a much deeper and profound way now than we ever have as neighbors have been rallying together. The members of UDLC took <coughs> such pride in being here and seeing what was happening here for our community. Emily did all that. Wow. Yeah, Emily is amazing. That's a lot of, that's a lot of cutting. That's a lot of, she grabbed people off of the website, off of other things, off of Facebook. And then this is the one from the field students. So I love this. By the way, every single one of them has presented in this room. That sounds awesome. Hi, Upper Dublin Lutheran Church. This is Pastor Courtney Smith coming to you from Messiah Lutheran Church in Oakland, New Jersey. Hey, Upper Dublin. This is Dan Fantastic, your field ed student from 2015 to 2016, and your senior seminarian from 2017 to 2018. Hello, Upper Dublin. Uh, Lindsay Bates here, former field ed student and pastoral associate 2019-2021. My name is Pastor Eric Schuerian, and I serve as Upper Dublin Lutheran Church as a field ed seminarian from 2016 through 2017. While I was a field ed student, you helped shape me to become a pastor. You taught me to lean into who I am and who God is calling me to be. I learned at Upper Dublin uh, how to work with a diverse group, a diverse community for common mission. What I remember you most for is just the way that you loved and supported me really, really well. I have such fond memories of my time there as I learned how to teach children during their faith formation, preach the word of God, lead adult forums in discussing important topics, you gave me outlets to explore and to try new things. And I'm so grateful for all of the ways that you are continuing to shape pastors all over the country and all over the world. Uh, I'm able to focus on community and relationships and common mission to make a difference. And I learned that at Upper Dublin. I keep getting a lot of compliments about how confident I am in leading and how I didn't seem nervous <laughs> to preach or to read or teach and I, I owe a lot of that to you all. Something that I will always remember, my time at Upper Dublin and how you supported me and my family. Thank you all for taking a chance on me, for opening up your community and continuing the ministry of learning and teaching uh, for hopefully years to come. Courtney is getting ordained uh, next, next, next Saturday. Saturday. The yeah. Saturday. The Saturday, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Uh, at our home church in the Prussian. Prussian, yeah. I think it's such a transformative experience for them mm -hmm. to be part of this church and then just as it was for you. Yeah. As you shared today. I mean, it's, it's a wonderful thing that you're doing. Yeah. It yeah. really is. Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. I think it's like, I had Every single one of them told me that this is the place they wanted to be. Interesting. Yeah. And we have a similar relationship with our seminary our professors. They constantly tell me what good reputations we have here. <laughs> it's lovely to you. Yeah. I mean, I had all these mentors, like I mentioned how we're like today, but at every stage of my life to have the, just the right people at the right time. And if I can help to be that, you know, provide that for somebody else, that's the best. Holy Spirit. And Kathleen is amazing. Really yes. get, we really get great students Don't too. Don't yeah. For, for yeah. yeah. So, um, so on the website, I mean, eventually you're going to see we're kind of re, just re, redoing things of you know how we're going to approach it. So, like I said, we're we're going to pull this theme not just for the fall, but we're going to live into this theme for a while. This is going to be our theme for a while, um, and. Uh, you know, we're trying to think about redoing the, the stewardship site in a different way. So we've got kind of the faces and the, the joyfulness and the, the mission that's right there in front of you as you're mm -hmm. heading to the pledge form, like which will be mailed out, but also online, and the time and talents link, um, so people can click that. But then, you know, so we're just trying to think about the joy, you know, that, that mm -hmm. should be part of all of that and what our, our giving makes, makes happen. In the next two weeks here, we'll be bringing in people who are good and faithful servants right here at Upper Dublin. Uh, and so many of them are invisible to us. All that they do, 
but they are just such good and faithful servants, whether they're heading up a, a committee or serving on altar guild, you know, are very invisible. <laughs> but, but I mean, we have a, just so many, we have, we're so wealthy in our town. I call them secretly awesome people. Yes. I'm stealing that. The secretly <laughs> awesome people that uh, are just, you know, under, just under your radar. So these are pictures from the youth hike we did up top. And then on the, the left, bottom left is our worship planning group. Um, and so in the middle is the mentorship we just had. And then on the right, we did pumpkin carving with the confirmation class. Oh, yeah. my, my, my kids asked if we could do that. So um, confirmation this year, we moved, it was Thursday nights for an hour and a half. And that was tough for everybody. So we moved it to Tuesday nights because there's all kinds of things happening here on Tuesday nights. There's the kids music, you know, so to kind of grab, kind of migrate toward having Tuesday night and church night in some way and have look for some crossover opportunities. And um, we made it an hour it instead is, of an hour and a half. As one is, of the leaders, it is so much better. It's easier. It's better for everybody. And, and now we're, now the kids are asking, Hey, could we carve pumpkins after class? And we're going to do pretzel pretzel, make, pretzel making, making and baking yeah. after class so um it kind of like opened things up for a different kind of experience you know? mm -hmm. so COVID's had a lot of uh, challenges but it yielded a lot of gifts um, well, we're giving them sweet we're giving our children sweet memories yeah. here yeah. of what their faith is all about sweet sweet memories and so i'll just close with this henry now for maybe have a couple god's and I'm using, I'm using uh, Kathleen's kingdom. Mm -hmm. God's kingdom is the place of abundance where every generous act overflows its original bounds and becomes part of the unbounded grace of God at work in the world. I like the other one. Every, now, every, time I, every time I take a step in the direction of generosity, I know I'm moving from here to love. Oh. <laughs> I mean, the whole little book is, it's just a book. Mm -hmm. It's like everything in it is great. And uh, that's it. Oh. Thank you so much for this and many other things. Thank you. You gave a message that all of us need to hear, and so I'm thankful that it's being recorded. But also, we need to make it more known. You know that this is what stewardship is. This is, and you know. And people coming up to me, well, I'm not going to come today, Donnie, because I don't want to hear anything about stewardship. I'm thinking, you poor sod. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but, you know, this this is what stewardship is. It's joyful. It's, it's transformational. It is uplifting. It is a gift to us. It is a gift. Because we have, I love the phrase, the Jews zero in on glad and generous hearts. So please spread the word to anybody you're talking to here at Upper Dublin. You know, listen, listen, go back and listen to the recording. It'll do a, do a world of good. Yeah. So, you know, this year is probably like a transitional year. And, um, you know, so, and then I think next year we'll really have more time to implement uh, some more of the ideas and takeaways from, from the course. But I'm happy with the direction you're Thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you.